the Chief Executive of the Centre for Countering Digital Hate, Imran Ahmed. Good evening, uh, Imran, or good afternoon to you. What is your view about the issue of how we control uh, social, social media or expressions of hatred on social media? Well, I thank you. And look, the, the question is quite telling. Should social media companies be forced to tackle online hate? And that's because they've failed to do so without any without any coercion. The reason being that they have found it easier, less obstructive to the to the sort of their core business, which is making oodles of money through advertising, to not curate the environments that they administer. And despite the fact that their rules clearly state when you sign up to social media, you are of course going onto a private platform that has terms and conditions, those endless lists of things that you can and cannot say on those platforms uh, for fear of breaking their, their rules. Those standards are both a responsibility to the user, that those are the things we have to abide by, those things that most of us abide by, but they can also be seen as a reciprocal right, that we have the right, therefore, to expect an environment that is free of hate, misinformation, of lies, of violence and intimidation, and they have failed to do so. Not only do we know that through observation, so when we report misinformation, report hatred to them, we find that they don't take action. But the whistleblower who uh, has been putting, uh, has been re releasing papers, the Wall Street Journal in particular has been covering it in si and 60 Minutes in the US, they showed that only that Facebook know themselves that only three to five percent of hate on their platform is dealt with. Even worse, when it comes to what we've just experienced in the United Kingdom, 0.6% less than one in a hundred of violence and intimidation is dealt with by their platform. And they think that's job well done. It's extraordinary, really, isn't it, that we're being forced to force them. Imran, those are important figures, but I guess that um, the social media companies might say, OK, you can throw those percentages, but really, how big a problem is this? How many people does it really affect? Well, I mean, here's the thing, that the violence, intimidation, the hatred, these are their own internal statistics. We actually found those to be true ourselves. They, they pushed back. I mean, we, we actually put out research showing that 5% of hate was dealt with. They came back and said, that's nonsense. We've got our own figures. They don't corroborate that at all. It turns out their own figures said that it was exactly right. So we, we, we can be pretty certain that around 19 and 20 bits of hate on their platform have no action, around 99 and 100 bits of violence and intimidation. And they will say, of course, it's very difficult for us to deal with because there's such a volume of it. Well, isn't that the problem? That they've allowed for the creation of a sense that this is normal. And when you, when you allow the unfettered flow of violence, hate and intimidation on a platform that is central to how we communicate these days, how we set social mores and values, then it changes, it mal-socializes society as a whole. What has changed in the past few years? Social media. Thank you very much, uh, Imran Ahmed.